For centuries, the hills and valleys of Scotland echoed to the sound of warring clans, led into battle by their ambitious chieftains. Medieval warrior kings like Robert the Bruce, who defeated the English on the battlefield, helped create the fearsome fighting legend of the Scots. And in later years, outlaws like Rob Roy MacGregor added to the colourful tapestry of Scottish folklore. Fortunately, those days of bloody conflict are long gone. But one tradition from the earliest days of Scotland's history has survived through the years virtually unchanged. The Highland Games. The Games, similar to many others in the Celtic lands of Europe, are based on the sporting activities of rural Scotland, practiced nearly a thousand years ago to help keep strong, able-bodied young men in a state of readiness for battle. They first became organized into what we'd recognize as today's Highland Games in the 11th century and have hardly changed since. Athletes from nine countries from as far away as Australia and the United States have come to calendar in central Scotland for this year's World Heavy Events Championship. The athletes traditionally compete in kilts the only problem is finding one big enough to fit their enormous girths. Among the contenders is 24 stone Jamie Reeves of England. He recently broke a barrel lifting record that had lasted nearly 300 years. 24 stone Jan Paul Sigmarsson of Iceland is currently the world's strongest man, a title he's now won four times. Scotland's best hopes rest with Alistair Gunn, a relative weakling at only 16 stone. The reigning champion is allowed to display the sword and ancient targe or shield, and for the last three years, that honor has been held by 19 stone American Jim McGoldrick. Some friends of mine, about 10 or 12 years ago, uh, first introduced me to the games, took me around to some of the professional games in the United States, and uh, I tried my hand at it. Uh, the games back as late as, as early as 1978, and uh, then got serious with the games about 1985. Scotland's George Patience leads the way in the 20 pound heavy hammer. McGoldrick can only finish seventh. In the caber tossing, the showman, Jon Paul Sigmarsson, delights the crowd with some unorthodox footwork. Here, the athletes are using a light caber and tossing it Scandinavian style. The winner is the one who throws it the furthest. In Scottish style tossing, the caber is much heavier and the winner is the one who throws it straightest. The light caber proves no problem for the world's strongest man, who beats McGoldrick into second place by almost three feet. The next event is throwing a 56-pound weight as high as possible. Jamie Reeves wins with a championship record of 17 feet 5 inches. Jon Paul Sigmarsson shows what fashion-conscious Vikings are wearing under their kilts, while McGoldrick begins to improve after his disappointing start to the day. If you've ever had to run for a train carrying a heavy suitcase, you'll know how these men feel. In the murderous farmer's walk, the strong men carry two ten-stone oxygen cylinders as far as possible. McGoldrick heads towards the second day, two points clear of the rest of the field. Whereas Scotland's ancient warriors were truly warlike, these modern strong men are really the best of friends. At breakfast, they eat to keep up their strength, and here, Jon Paul Sigmarsson reveals some trade secrets. Here in Scotland, I'll eat a lot of food I don't eat at home. A lot of bacon and eggs and a lot of deep fried food. I'll also eat a lot of creamed rice, which is very healthy and easy to handle. I'll then eat a lot of so-called weight gain, which helps make me much heavier. I mix that with milk. My intake at the moment is about 15,000 calories a day.
On the second day, Avidas Svegzda, Lithuania's strongest man, is impressed by what he's seen. This is the first time anyone from my country has taken part in these Highland Games, and it's a great honor for me. The atmosphere is very friendly, and the games are very interesting. When the letter came inviting me to the games, I thought it sounded good, but reading about them is one thing, seeing them with my own eyes is something else. I'm enjoying it, and I hope they will enjoy them back home, as I'm going to try and popularize them back in Lithuania. While he's learning the ropes, the experts are carrying out another tradition, toasting the heavy caber. With two events left, McGoldrick is still fighting to retain his title, and victory in the caber toss puts it within reach. Scotland's Alistair Gunn can still beat him, but this miss in throwing the sheaf proves costly. McGoldrick takes his time. He's already had one missed throw, but knows that a clear attempt now will stretch his reign for another year. It's close, but this throw clears the bar. Jim McGoldrick, America's modern-day Highland King.